David Hume, born May 7th, April 26th, Old Style, 1711, Edinburgh, Scotland, died August 25th, 1776, Edinburgh, Scottish philosopher, historian, economist, and essayist known especially for his philosophical empiricism and skepticism. There is no such thing as freedom of choice unless there is freedom to refuse. A wise man proportions his belief to the evidence. Beauty in things exists in the mind which contemplates them. When men are most sure and arrogant they are commonly most mistaken. Nothing is more surprising than the easiness with which the many are governed by the few. It is seldom that liberty of any kind is lost all at once. Slavery has so frightful an aspect to men accustomed to freedom, that it must steal upon them by degrees, and must disguise itself in a thousand shapes, in order to be received. If God is omnipotent, omniscient and wholly good, whence evil? If God wills to prevent evil, but cannot, then he is not omnipotent. If he can prevent evil, but does not, then he is not good. In either case, he is not God. All knowledge degenerates into probability. Beauty is no quality in things themselves, it exists merely in the mind which contemplates them, and each mind perceives a different beauty. The life of man is of no greater importance to the universe than that of an oyster. Truth springs from argument amongst friends. To hate, to love, to think, to feel, to see, all this is nothing but to perceive. Nothing exists without a cause, the original cause of this universe we call God. No amount of observations of white swans can allow the inference that all swans are white, but the observation of a single black swan is sufficient to refute that conclusion. Nothing appears more surprising to those who consider human affairs with a philosophical eye than the easiness with which the many are governed by the few and the implicit submission with which men resign their own sentiments and passions to those of their rulers. The greater part of mankind may be divided into two classes, that of shallow thinkers who fall short of the truth, and that of abstruse thinkers who go beyond it. Muhammad praises instances of treachery, inhumanity, cruelty, revenge, and bigotry that are utterly incompatible with civilized society. It is not reason which is the guide of life, but custom. A man acquainted with history may, in some respect, be said to have lived from the beginning of the world, and to have been making continual additions to his stock of knowledge in every century. While we are reasoning concerning life, life is gone. A propensity to hope and joy is real riches, one to fear and sorrow real poverty. It is an absurdity to believe that the deity has human passions, and one of the lowest of human passions, a restless appetite for applause. All power, even the most despotic, rests ultimately on opinion. When men are most sure and arrogant they are commonly most mistaken, giving views to passion without that proper deliberation which alone can secure them from the grossest absurdities. When I hear that a man is religious, I conclude he is a rascal. What we call a mind is nothing but a heap or collection of different perceptions, united together by certain relations and supposed, though falsely, to be endowed with a perfect simplicity and identity. The mind is a kind of theater, where several perceptions successively make their appearance, pass, repass, glide away, and mingle in an infinite variety of postures and situations. Everything in the world is purchased by labor. Time is a perishable commodity. Morals excite passions and produce or prevent actions. Reason of itself is utterly impotent in this particular. The rules of morality, therefore, are not conclusions of our reason. Be a philosopher, but, amid all your philosophy, be still a man. Anticipation of pleasure is, in itself, 
a very considerable pleasure. A little philosophy makes a man an atheist, a great deal converts him to religion. Liberty of any kind is never lost all at once. The corruption of the best things gives rise to the worst. Belief is nothing but a more vivid, lively, forcible, firm, steady conception of an object than what the imagination alone is ever able to attain. Human happiness seems to consist in three ingredients, action, pleasure, and indolence.